Uh, a difficult day ahead for the Prime Minister. Uh, his premiership's been described as in crisis this morning. Uh, Right-wing rebels causing lots of problems for him with his new Rwanda bill. They say it doesn't go far enough. Uh, just a moment ago, uh, we can see uh, some of the Conservative MPs well, in the dark there, the uh, arriving Miriam at Downing Kate. Street to get their bacon buddies mm. this morning. Um, so the Prime Minister's hosting a breakfast for them. They'd do anything for a cup of tea and a croissant then um, to woo them, woo these rebel MPs ahead of the Rwanda vote. There's Lee Anderson at the back there. Live this evening. Just trying to spot in the dark. It's quite a, quite a difficult job. Um, but the question is, will it be enough to persuade them or is it simply time for a general election? This well, is our big debate Will the bacon buddy be enough? No, the soothing oh, words of oh, the Prime right, Minister. Oh, right, 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 right. He's quite a slick operator. Uh, well, we're going to debate this this morning with the political commentator and co-founder of Conservatives Against Racism, Albie Amoncona, of course, a contributor here on GB News as well, and the political analyst for orthodox, orthodox Conservatives uh, on the right wing of the party, you could say, uh, David Moore. Uh, good morning and welcome to both of you. Um, let's start with you, David, then. Um, you could see a crew assembling there. I don't know if you could spot some of the other faces in there that I wasn't able to spot. Um, do you think they're going to be persuaded by the um, sweet talking of the Prime Minister this morning? Well, we'll see how tasty that breakfast did, of course. <laughs> now, we saw the ERG very clearly say this does not go far enough. The Rwanda bill needs to be reformed. It has too many plug holes and we've seen Blairite institutions like the Supreme Court saying that they keep committing guerrilla warfare against this legislation, the NGOs behind it, international law, uh, that is actually arguably subverting parliamentary sovereignty. So there's some actually very interesting points made there, and I think some very valid points. But ultimately, the Conservative electorate, the voters, the members, want results. They want illegal immigration to be tackled. And I think we need to unite. Uh, uh, and so, David, your fear is that this leaves too many holes in the defence. You think it's, it's too easy for lawyers to sweep on this and hold things up? Absolutely. I think there's this, this attack... On our, on our immigration system, there have been migration lawyers who have literally tuned the system where they've absolutely blocked, they've completely obstructed the, 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 the policy for over a year. It's been going on for so long now. I think uh, Rishi's plan's not perfect, but I think we need to get a solution here because time is running out. Well, so, Albie, is the solution to all of this a general election? No, I don't think the solution to all of this is a general election. Look, it doesn't really matter whether or not the new Conservatives, the Conservative Growth Group, the ERG, vote for this bill, because the One Nation group of MPs, which is a, a group of 106 moderate Conservative MPs, have agreed to vote through this bill. This bill, therefore, will most likely vote, will most likely pass through Parliament today. Now, the question about a general election, I think any Conservative that wants a general election would be absolutely bonkers, especially Red Wall MPs like Miriam Cates and our colleague Lee Anderson, who have very small majorities, who, on current polling, will probably lose their seats at the next general election if we were to call a general election tomorrow. It would be a complete betrayal of the votes we won and tried to win at the last general election in the Red Wall. A general election should be held at the latest possible point so the economy can pick up, inflation can come down, earnings can, can, can continue to rise, and people start to feel the benefits of the tax cuts that the Prime Minister brought in earlier on this year. The only hope for the Conservative Party is that people feel better off at some point in the future, and at that point in the future, within the limits of the law, a general election should be called, and I think that is probably about a year away from now. Um, David, what would you say to that? Because I know that, um, you know, certainly the grassroots of the party uh, aren't really big fans of Rishi Sunak. They, they preferred Liz Truss uh, in all of this. But, you know, as Suella Bravman herself said, if it went to an election next week, the Tories would face electoral oblivion. So why would you wish that upon yourselves uh, when the party's in such a mess? Well, I think a general election is inevitable. We've got practically a year left. You know, this time next year, we'll probably see an election already called. Uh, if not already completed. Now, I think that inevitability, we have to understand, we have to be prepared on a campaign footing. And I'm certainly on the doors at the moment myself, canvassing, because we should not be afraid. And you mentioned the Red Wall. Well, the Red Wall, they want to see results. And ultimately, if we're going to see those results, we've got to be in that campaign footing and understand that a general election is nigh and we have to be prepared and get those results through. I think dragging things on and kicking the can down the road is only going to but cause David, more issues. Um, presumably, you can see that the objections that the ERG is and the others are making are actually the ones dragging this on. I mean, 
what do you want? Because essentially you're never going to be able to win over the One Nations by tampering with international protocols. Sure. It's the same with Rwanda. They've said that they would pull out of the deal if, if you touch the ECHR. So what do you, what do you want? But hypothetically, if we are to extend the general election to the absolute maximum of five years to January 2025, this could just exasperate division. Or we can actually find a general election, get into that campaign footing, unite and mm. get a mandate. A proper and, and you also obviously feel, David, that uh, scrapping, pulling out, distancing yourself from the European Court of Human Rights, the European Convention of Human Rights, uh, would actually be a vote winner. I think so. That's what I hear on the doors. This is what Conservative members want. This is what Conservative voters want. This is what the Red Wall want. They want results and they want illegal immigration to be tackled. What about the blue wall in all of this, Albie, the traditional Tory heartlands, which is under threat from the Lib Dems at the next election? Everyone wants results, whether you're in the red wall, whether you're in the blue wall, whether you're in the city, whether you're in the countryside. I mean, I just think this, this whole argument that David is putting that we want results, but he wants a general election. Well, which one do you want? If you want results, then you wouldn't want a general election because you would want the legislation to pass. You, want, you would want the legislation to work. You would want Rishi Sunak's plan to go as well as possible. And then at the point that things start working, then you would call a general election. And actually, his plan on migration, on illegal migration, is working. Channel boat crossings are already down a third this year than they were last year. All of the issues with legal migration were caused by policies that Boris Johnson and Priti Patel brought in after Brexit, liberalising immigration policy. So it was more liberal after Brexit than it was before. You're talking like all of the problems which have been caused today have been caused by Rishi Sunak. They were all caused by Boris Johnson. So let's just be very clear about that. Rishi Sunak has got an unholy mess to clean up and he needs more time to clean it up before the next general election. If you want a general election, then the general election tomorrow, okay. we will lose badly. OK, Albie. Um, you, you don't think so, David, just briefly? Well, I think, you know, in 2019, we had a massive majority. We get on a campaign footing in the midst of absolute turmoil and chaos in 2019. We won a massive majority, mm. and that was under Boris Johnson. And I think we should understand You've got your head that we have in to return to those Conservative values. What would you think, David, what would you think of Boris Johnson aligned with uh, Nigel Farage or Nigel Farage having some sort of input or representation within the Conservative Party? Well, I think Nigel could potentially make a comeback. He's made this very clear. Maybe not under Rishi Sunak, but maybe in the future. So who knows what the future holds? He may return. OK, guys, uh, you may return.